Alrighty, folks. Well, I just wanted to put this video together and explain some things dealing with, um, oh my gosh, dealing with the portfolio. So I'm going to go page by page of the portfolio, putting this together. So if it's a little choppy, it's because I had to stop recording or something like that. But, um, as you're going through the first page is the bubble diagram. Second page is the rough sketches. Third page is the dimension floor plan. Now I've included for you videos on how to add room labels and how to dimension it. Um, but I'm going to quickly show you, and then I'm also going to show you how to put it in a border and title block and how to load all of that stuff. So first thing that's a little different, you'll notice <clears throat> that mine's a little different from yours is I've got my scale set to a quarter inch equals a foot. So if you want to change that, that's down here. Yours is probably set to one eighth equals a foot. Uh, I like a quarter inch equals a foot just because it makes my text appear smaller. But that's how that is. Um, so first thing is adding room tags. So up here under the architect architecture tab, you'll find the room and area portion and the room. So easy enough, you grab a room tag and you can just go place it in that room. Now, the only issue I could see you guys running into is rooms like this. You see how it's large and there are no other walls separating it. Obviously, this isn't going to be one room. This is going to be my kitchen, my dining room area, and then my living room area. So I'm going to need an add a, I'm going to need to add room separators. So I'm going to hit cancel out of that. And I'm going to go up here next to room. You've got your room separators. And now I can go in and I can add separators into this room. And they're just drawing little lines in. Uh, maybe didn't like that. Okay. I'm going to start here. Give it a little bit more for my kitchen. But there, you can see I have some lines in. I can go in and edit these lines at any time, like by dragging them. It's just an option you have. But now when I go add my room tags, I can now label these individually and they can be the separate rooms and areas that I want. You can have one for my hallway. Now on the room tag, you can zoom in, click slowly, left click slowly twice and you can name them. You can even rename the numbers or can we get rid of them completely? No. Can I? That's fine. Um, they have numbers. They're for the however many rooms. So I've it, it, I've entered in room tags already and deleted them, but they didn't restart counting or recount. So obviously I can go in and just put this as two. There's one. It's gonna yell at me because I those are already defined, but I don't care. But I'm not gonna worry about it for the rest. But that's how you go and you put in room tags and room separators. Pretty easy. All right, so that's in there. Now, when you do some other things, you might want to have those hidden, but for now, that's good. Like I said, the video on how to dimension is fantastic. So I recommend you watch it because I'm only going to quickly go over it. And if that's not enough for you, you're probably not going to do it correctly. So I'm only going to dimension one wall just so that it's quick and I can show you how to do it. But to dimension, annotate, and we're going to grab an um, align dimension. And now, this is how this works. Um, dimensions for architecture are normally in three rows. You've got one closest to the uh, floor plan itself, middle and farther away. So the one closest to the floor plan is the most detailed. So we will dimension it from the exterior wall to the middle of anything um, that touches, besides furniture and stuff like that, anything that touches the exterior wall we're dimensioning. So a window, middle of the window, this wall, middle of this wall because it touches that exterior wall. We wouldn't do this one because it's not actually physically touching it. 
this door is touching it, this window is touching it, and then the exterior of this wall. And then we drag it up and drop it. Now, the second tier, we are just doing walls. So the exterior of that wall, of our exterior wall, the outside of the exterior wall, the middle of our interior walls, and then the outside of our exterior wall. For interior walls, you always go in the middle. For exterior walls, you always go on the outside. So I can put those as equal because they were equal. So I just did that by clicking on it. Now, the last tier is just the overall dimension. And now that I know that it's that, I can just figure out those. But at this point, what I would do is if I see any repeating dimensions, I would want to click on it, click on the line, get out of the tool. There we go. Click on it. And, oops, control Z. I can just click on the, mm -hmm. nope, ah, hold on folks. Sorry, my apologies. I don't know why that wasn't working. But anyway, to delete a repeat, because say this 8 foot 8 was up there as well. I would want to delete the one that's repeating closest to the home. So I'm going to click on it. You're going to go to Edit Witless Line, and you're just going to click on the thing you want to delete. So if I want to delete this outside edge, I just click on it and then click in the white space, and it deletes it. So same for this one. If I want to Edit Witless Line, Witness Line, click on it. Edit Witness Line. I click on that click and it's gone so it's just that simple but obviously I want them there now you're gonna do that for all of your walls you want to mention them all um, it does kind of get a little spread out and hard to see but that's okay you can always move them in um, and stuff like that now if I wanted to I could go down here and I could edit the text really so if I click on my dimension I can hit edit type and then if I find my text, I go to text size. I could edit that. So right now it's 3 30 seconds of an inch. What if I made it an eighth? Let's see what that looks like. Apply. Okay. So you can see my text got bigger. That's great. So I like that. I'm going to leave it like that. And then you'll want to do all the rest of your sides. Um, if they overlap like this, you can obviously grab this little movement thing and move it out of the way. Or center things if you want to. So that is how we do that. Now, inserting it into a um, border and title block. Kind of easy. We're going to go down to Sheets and we're going to right click, hit New Sheet. Now it's going to bring up a text or a, uh, not a text box, but a menu box. And you're probably only going to have this one loaded. Now, I have a couple other options. I have another, a couple other sizes. So to do that, you go to load. And then you're going to back out into your menus. And you want to go down to text blocks. And you've got a bunch of options here. You've got A, B, C, D, two Ds. Because you've got, well, looks like I edited one of them. Probably put my name in it. Um, and then E. And then another E. So I'm just going to use the ones I have, but if you don't have uh, many options, um, you can load one. You would hit open, and then you've got them in here. I'm going to use my, I'll try my 17 by 22, see how that looks. I'm going to open that up. All right, puts it in here. Yours will probably be unnamed, and it probably won't have anything in here. Um, I edited my text box, and to do that, or I edited my title block, and I saved it as a new title block because if I didn't do that, every time I edit that, like what I mean by edit is if I click into it, sorry, if I double click on this title block, it's going to open up that file and it'll allow you to make changes to the file itself. So that thing we just loaded in. Um, now, that can be beneficial if you want those changes to stay every time you open up that document. But if you don't want those changes to stay, I don't recommend editing this, okay? So,
I'm not going to save any changes. You would always have to hit load into project or else it wouldn't work. But if you just want to change some of the things, you just click on it. You can type in, click on it, type in, unnamed. What is this? Oh, it's unnamed because if we open up our sheets, it says unnamed. But I'm going to rename that. I'm going to make this sheet number one. I'm going to name it for plan. Floor plan. Okay. Now to insert my floor plan, it's super easy. I just go over, grab it, drag, drop. There it is. Just put her in where I want it. Now, again, if it's smaller, you probably didn't mess with your scale. If you want to, you can make your scale bigger. If you've got the room, why not? Now, it'll make the scale of the drawing bigger, but it will not make your text bigger. So if you want your text bigger, you're going to have to go back here, click on your text, hit edit text, scroll down. We were at an eighth. Let's make it a quarter of an inch. Again, I don't know if we can actually edit the text of a room tag. but that's fine. Uh, the text of your dimensions will be good enough. And if you don't ever like where they're placed, you just drag them. Maybe I want them closer, kind of spaced out a lot. Spaces them a little bit more nicely. So you can see I've got them in there. Now, you probably wouldn't be able to do this size because it, you wouldn't have room over here. So all those changes I just made doesn't really matter because I'm going to have to change them back because well, I don't have enough room. So I'm going to put them back. I'm going to go back to my floor plan. I'm going to, it updates it, obviously. And I'm going to change the size of my scale back to a quarter inch. I just wanted to show you the options that the software has for you. But now that's pretty good. That'll give me enough room to dimension on all sides. Okay, cool. So that's how you put the border and title block in. And you would do that for any of them. If I'm looking at the project, you do that for the floor plan, dimension floor plan. You do that for your elevation views. You do that for um, your window schedule. So that's pretty simple. And you're just going to have to create a new sheet. So you could create all your sheets now. I could right click new sheet. Let's do the same size. Okay. I'm going to rename this one. I don't know what I just did. Sheet two, and this one's going to be my elevation views. Then I need another sheet. Uh oh. All right, so now I've got a couple of sheets there. So for my elevation views, obviously I can just drag and drop them in. Now, one starting out, it's going to take you a little bit of time to like finagle them the way you want. So this, I don't have my drawing, as you can see, my 3D view of this. It's There's not a lot going on. So I still need to go and make those changes. But you'll have more than what I have. Um, I guess that just didn't take. So if I drag it in, oh, close. Where did I drag that? Oh, I dragged it into window schedule. Duh. It's not going to let you put them in two things in the same schedule. So I'll try that again. Now, if I want, I can open this up. You can see that there's a lot showing. I can edit these lines. I can drag them back so they're not as far out. And I can drag these in so they're not as far out as well. And it just will fit better on your border and title block. 
And same with this. So if I click on this, it'll give you, you have to. So if you just click on this line because you want to change the size of this line, it's not going to work. You actually have to click on the view, so the elevation view, and then it's going to give you those little 